In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to apply color and fills to an effect using the Shading Effects Editor. But before I do this, be sure to have watched the previous lessons on the Shading Effects Editor, which talk about the shading and lighting, the bevels and profiles, along with the reflection and bump maps, so you've got a good understanding of how these work before doing this lesson. So to do this lesson, I'll scroll over here to the left, and I'll zoom out a little, and I'll type in a uh, letter A, okay, and I'll make it a little bit bigger. Also make it bold so you can see what I'm doing here. So I've said before, you come over to this tool, the Special Effects and Shading Flyout, and click on that, and we get all these tools here. Now for this lesson, I'll just um, click on one of the presets here, and it really doesn't matter which one we select. Uh, I'll just select this one will do, accept. Okay, we've got a, a red letter A, and we've got a, uh, a reflection map on that. So what we'll do is we'll bring up the Shading Effects Editor, which we can get to in many uh, places. We can come to the Shading Tools here. Click on this button, which brings it up here, Shading Tools. We can also go to the Effects menu. Click on Shading Tools up here. And as always, in Vinyl Master in the second row of tools, we get the tools that are relevant to what we're currently working on. These are context sensitive. So we can bring the uh, Shading Effects Editor up here. And here we are and we can put it up out of the way. We can roll it up by clicking on this button and bring back our tools when we need them. So we've got our shading and our lighting here which we've discussed in the past and the bevel and profile and the reflection and uh, bump maps that we can apply to this particular job. As you can see when I apply a bump map you get the, uh, the effect there. So up here in these tools we have texture gradients and uh, solid colors or uniform colors that we can apply to our effect and we'll start off with uh, with textures and I'll show you how those work so I'll click texture and we get our texture library up and as you can see once you've got the full version you get all these textures up and there's a lot of them but I'll work with the demo textures in case you've just got the demo version and what I want to show you is the sorts of uh, things you can do to apply a text you simply select the text you want you'll see a preview of it click accept Ah, now there's something you should learn about. Okay, if you don't have the object selected the right way, or the, the effect, you can't actually apply a texture, a gradient, or a color to it. What you have to do is click off it, and click on it, and select it as an object. Because before it was actually selected, if I click on Edit Effects here, it was selected in Effects Mode. So what happens when you do that is, whoop, in Effects Mode, is it's designed so that you can actually edit the effect on the screen with the mouse. So you need to click off it, click on it, then you go to texture, scroll down to the texture you were looking at, and click accept. So that's something that you should know about. Now in this particular case, uh, this, this wood effect here doesn't actually look right being a gloss. So we'll just quickly fix that up. It won't take a moment. Just bring down some of these, these tools here so it looks more like a, uh, you know, a regular piece of wood here. We'll, get, we'll remove the uh, outer radius, don't need that. Now you can see here, uh, where it's a non-repeating pattern, how you get this uh, this problem here. So if we just roll this up, and we select this, uh, the edit. Uh, sorry, if we click on the edit fill mode, so this mode here, which is the fill mode, we can see we get this gizmo come up. I'll just zoom out a little bit, so you can see that that gizmo, and I can actually move that around, and you can see I can actually move where the texture is being viewed or is actually applied to the object. Now there's some great tools up here in the second row. If I click on this mirror tool and this mirror tool, although it hasn't completely fixed it, it certainly doesn't look as bad as what it did a moment ago. It looks more, a little bit more realistic, as you can see. So that's a good way of fixing that. When you have a repeating texture, uh, like uh, for example, say this one here, this is a repetitive texture, click accept. You can see, actually I'll just lighten it up a little bit just to make it look a little bit better. So I'll give it a bit of uh, surface brightness and just increase the gloss a little bit and give it some highlights up like that oh it's probably a little bit too much okay there we go and bring the surface brightness down a bit okay so we've got this job here let's adjust the bevel down okay now we've got this repetitive pattern going on here and if we go into this uh, fill mode here or fill mode's also available here so I can click on it there I can actually make the repeating texture much smaller as you can see here and I can reposition it and it perfectly repeats itself and I can move this around uh, I can even rotate this I've got com complete control 
I can you know, stretch it and skew it and do all sorts of things to create any sort of effect with this particular texture that I'm looking for. So that's a great tool to be able to use and to edit textures. So applying textures is easy. You simply click on that button. You go down, um, go to any texture you particularly like, uh, flowers for example, uh, make them smaller. And that's how we apply these, these particular um, these textures. Now, another thing you can apply, I'll just turn that off, another thing you can apply here is a gradient fill. So if you go up to this button and, and click on gradient fill, you'll see that we've provided you with a, a quite a large number of gradients uh, built into the program. And you can go through and select on the one that you're looking for, and sometimes I'll scroll down because there's a lot of them. So with golds we've got lots of golds, lots of earth tones, lots of ocean tones as you can see. There's, uh, there's quite a selection there and you can just go to the one that you're looking for doesn't really matter which one I'll just use this one for the time being click accept and as you can see now I'll just turn that reflection map off as you can see here you can actually edit the nodes live on the job itself because I'm in that mode I'm in fill mode which is quite a handy thing to, to have and as, as always in the second row of tools I can now adjust things when I have a gradient fill actually selected you'll see that the uh, edit gradient tab comes up when I go to the gradient fill and I can adjust all these settings I can do them manually here I can make this a conical fill and click accept and I can then move that into the position I'm looking for as you can see there and you know I could rotate it or skew it or whatever I wanted to do uh, edit with the fiddle with the nodes there's a lot of controls here and you really can create a wealth of effects I mean I could for example add a soft shadow onto that and position that like that just to get you know a particular effect I'm looking for so that's how the gradient fills work the other thing you can do is change the color of the uh, of the object itself so I can go over to here and I can make it red or yellow or, or blue now don't forget these four tools here or these four color selectors here because if I click on this end one you can see how it instantly goes darker and these ones actually change the hue so by using these buttons here if I wanted a slightly darker red I just click on this button here and see how it goes slightly darker so they're very handy tools to have they're interactive color tools uh, I can also click on the solid button here and it brings up our color selector the color selector is quite powerful there's lots of color models now, I like HSV because I can adjust my hue uh, as you can see here I can spin this around and I might want some sort of a purpley pinky color for argument's sake I can move this node around in here and you can see the preview adjusts as I move it as if I move it here as well so my value between black and white and the how much saturation I want of that particular hue so full saturation is the the most of that color you can get okay so I select that I can also click in here and move this around to select whatever color I'm looking for I'm happy with my color and I click apply and I've now got my color I'll show another little trick with solid color let's say there was something a color that you saw on the screen you wanted to use if I click on this and hold this down every time I go over something I shall go over the colors to show you you can see the preview is changing because where I've got this color pip a it's actually changing the color so that's the gray color of uh, of the background there the blue of the title bar and the blue of the background of the actual program there so if I click on that and go accept I can apply that color so that color matches that color perfectly not very nice color for this particular job but it goes to show you how you can do that so that's how we apply textures gradients and solid fills to an existing effect and they can be quite good those fills because you can really create some quite amazing looking things especially when you start using the uh, the film mode and there you can see it looks like pebbles on the under a bit of water in fact because it's so glossy uh, and I really encourage you to take some time, go through these tools and have a look at how they really do affect the sorts of effects you can create. And by all means, try some of these presets. Uh, an example would be, say, a stone effect. And you can see how using a, a reflection map, uh, sorry, a bump map, you can really get, I'll increase the bump height, you can really get quite, uh, quite amazing effects using the program. Okay, another quick thing I just wanted to show you just before I end this lesson is I'll zoom out. I just wanted to show you copy and paste just quickly. So if I wanted to copy this effect to say this text here, it's very easy. I simply select the effect, 
I go to this button copy, click on copy, I go down to the text or the object I want to apply it to, I go paste, and there it is. That effect is applied to there, and if I zoom in, you'll see how it's applied it. And then that's uh, that effect is completely editable in here. I can bring that down to say three, and it will that particular setting suits this thinner uh, uh, stroke of this text. Okay, and that covers that uh, that that subject. Please make sure you experiment with these tools. They're very powerful, and you can create an infinite range of effects. And be sure to go to the presets and try different presets and apply those to your jobs and you'll be amazed at what you can create. That's the end of this lesson.